we spent an entire week on one subject here. And that's crazy for me because I don't ever spend that long on anything. So, hey, like the whole figuring out a format thing it worked for like five, six days. It's awesome. And we are ending this week's hair care line with a solid conditioner. But before we talk about that, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today, we are finishing up our hair care line with a solid conditioner. And I love the solid conditioners just for the eco-friendly, you know, value pack of that. It's definitely awesome to be able to remove a single-use plastic from your world whenever you can. And the solid conditioners definitely do that. And I love the solid conditioners in their performance as well. This was something that was a little bit hard for me to get behind for a while, primarily because I like to keep my products, you know, as natural as you possibly can, even though in the United States, natural is not a regulated term. So it means basically nothing. But in this instance, with uh, conditioner bars, you do use BKMS 50 as well as acetyl alcohol. And when you look at something called BTMS, you automatically assume that it is, you know, a chemical, and it is. Um, yeah, acetyl alcohol and BTMS 50, these are things that are called naturally derived. And again, that has a lot of non-meaning in my world too. So I'm not gonna get into sort of justifying why it is that I use what I do in these products. Um, because again, at the end of the day, if you're looking for an all natural route, this is not the way to go. And that will be true of 98% of solid conditioners you see on the market. There is going to be a BTMS component and probably acetyl alcohol and most likely a combination of the two. Now, hair masks, which I also make and love, that's a different story entirely. And you can do that completely natural with shea butter and oils and it's very cool. But we're talking about daily conditioner usage here. And so we definitely want to incorporate the BTMS and the acetyl alcohol to, you know, really help out with the staff and you know getting your hair to lay down nicely as well as being nice and moisturizing and also to make it solid so we don't have to have that uh, extra step with having a liquid conditioner and a bottle but anyway I'm going to talk all about that inside the video itself and I'm just rambling at this point so you know let's go do the thing Okay, so this is a really short video because like so many things with the hair care products, uh, all of the hard work actually goes into the, the back end when you're creating the, the recipe. And the actual making, not super tough, but you can definitely screw up a, a solid conditioner bar if you don't use the right ingredients. So lots of stuff goes into figuring out what those ingredients are. Now, what this is right now is BTMS 50. Now, BTMS 50 is uh, naturally derived. So it's derived from rapeseed and it's which is also canola kind of it's it's a thing that's kind of little wax we'll get back to that in a minute but uh the emul the uh, btms is gonna be really good for it's a nice emulsifier for something like this with a solid conditioner because obviously you want a solid bar with everything it's also a mild conditioner so it's really great for all hair types really good for detangling which is great and then you have the candelia wax in there which is good for uh, moisturizing it also acts as your co-emulsifier in this particular you know substrate and it helps the skin or the hair lock in moisture and then you have the shea butter here and shea butter is going to be great for you know conditioning and helping seal the the hair follicle and that's awesome 
And uh, then we also put in cocoa butter. Now cocoa butter is good for detangling and it also addresses you know, breakage and damage and uh, helps with the scalp's pH, which is, you know, important. Now, this particular batch of uh, hair conditioner that we're doing here right now, the solid conditioner, this one is a, uh, is the boost. And so this one is going to be for people with uh, hair that is either thin or thick that want, that we need some volume with. And uh, that going in right there, that's acetyl alcohol. Acetyl alcohol is a really interesting um, ingredient to put into conditioner products. It is a uh, fatty alcohol chain from coconut oil, right? And so it's again going to be really great for helping out with the uh, the moisture, sealing in, you know, your actual, your hair's moisture itself. And then, you know, it also helps with detangling and, you know, breakage and damage and all that jazz. Now we melt down all of those dry ingredients and then we're going to put in our, our liquid ingredients as well as our powders. Um, so what's going in right now is castor oil. Now because this is the boost bar, castor oil is going to be really good to help seal your hair follicle as well as, you know, give it some good sort of lift, right? And, um, and then what's going in there is the glycerin. Now glycerin is a natural humectant, so that's awesome. And what that's going to do in a boost, in a, a boost conditioner, is it's going to help out with the static. We don't want it to have too much, you know, flyaways and stuff like that, but also give it, you know, some nice uh, volume as well because it's assisting with the castor oil in the, you know, sealing of the hair follicle. Now, the uh, the scent for this guy, for the boost, it is a pomegranate blend from uh, Nature's Garden, which I really, really love. And before we get ready to pour, we're going to put in extracts. Now this particular extract, this is nettle. Nettle is a very interesting extract to put into uh, hair care products. It uh, really helps with growth, with hair growth, regrowth, damaged hair, that's great, as well as thickness. Because for the most part, people that are looking to, you know, add volume to their hair, they're doing so because they have thin hair. Now this is, that's not to say that this can't be used for people with thick hair, because it super can. It also, it helps out with uh, Eowyn's hair, for example, in keeping her curls nice and bouncy and coiled, which is very nice. And uh, then we have the Optifin ND going into that for a preservative. And then the last ingredient that we put in before we color it and do the things is the Panthenol. Now, Panthenol, you might actually know better from its other name, which is uh, Provitamin B5. And that's great for shine. It improves the tensile strength of your, of your hair. And so it's, Definitely something that you should always put into a, uh, a conditioner, be it liquid or solid. Anytime that I've ever tried to not use panthenol, the results just have not been as good. Like that's gonna, it's, it's so full of, of vitamins. It's very good to include in your, all of your hair, you know, conditioning products really. Now this particular hair conditioner bar, the boost, it's blue because we needed a way to distinguish between the six different ones that we, that we create and, you know, sell. But there's a very, very small amount of mic in there, so it doesn't actually impact, you know, the color of your hair or, you know, anything like that. I have heard that there is, that there are solid conditioner bars out there that just essentially use a crap ton of mica and they act as a, um, oh, what, what would it be like a like a temporary you know colorant kind of like the uh, I don't know the, those color gels that my kids use on their hair every once in a while I don't know if that's actually a thing I've never tried it but I guess in theory it seems like it might work except how do you like you can't touch your head to anything all day long otherwise you're just wiping that off on any surface that you put your head down on so whatever the color of this does not impact the bar one iota is the point that I'm, I'm making with that it's a very small amount of mica so it doesn't you know stay on your hair it doesn't show up on your hair it doesn't do anything other than let us know that it's the boost bar blue boost bees did the thing yeah now this is going to get poured and we're gonna let it dry and something like this it, it it re-solidifies within a couple hours so it's again it's a quick uh, it's a quick product to make the hardest part is figuring out what sort of um, cationic emulsifiers and you know the oils and butters and everything that you want in your, your what what 
you have to figure out your recipe, really. Like, what do you want your conditioner bar to do? That's the hardest part of all of this. And, you know, once you figure that out and dialed it in and done the testing and, you know, whatever, then making more is great. It's easy. There's there's nothing complicated to it. Again, the, the back-end work, the chemistry behind it, that's the hard part. And that's the stuff that you, you know, really have to focus on when creating a solid conditioner or anything for hair. Okay, and again, this is not a cut, this is just a pop. Take them out of the silicone molds and you know, let them do their thing. Now, these are ready to go right away, right? You don't have to, there's no cure time, there's no anything with it, they're, they're good to go. I do not wrap my conditioner bars. I have not found that that is at all necessary and I try to keep my packaging minimal at all times so that works out well, but you can wrap them. I have done so with like coffee filters and they, they see they make the you know coffee filters look weird but you know whatever and that's you know it you take that and you lather it up in your hand and you you know take the well you don't lather it necessarily but you know you work it with your hand you can put it directly on your hair whatever work it through your strands and then you rinse it out like you would a normal conditioner and the end result is just great everything is nice and smooth you don't have any tangles you know your hair isn't weighed down it's awesome Quick fun process, right? Yeah, there's not a lot to the actual making of the solid conditioner bars. A lot goes in to the recipe formulation and that has pretty much been the theme this entire week. We've been talking about how the bars themselves, easy to make in the actual making, but not so easy to formulate. And that's gonna be the biggest takeaway from the entire hair care line. Um, definitely, you know, we, we have the cold process shampoo, we have the hot process shampoo, we have the glycerin shampoo, we have the Syndet bar, and then now we have the, you know, the solid conditioner. And Syndet bars and solid conditioners, those are going to be kind of the mainstay, and I honestly believe that's why so many soapers are have been gravitating toward those products in the last few years, because they're easier to formulate than doing a proper cold process, hot process, or even a glycerin bar, depending on what type of melt and pour you're using and what you're putting into it. Then, so it's, I get why, you know, we've gravitated toward that. And ultimately with something like a conditioner bar or a Syndet bar, they're going to yield the best hair results for the most people. And so, you know, from a maker's perspective, we obviously want to please as many customers as possible. So I do understand why there is that sort of divide between the cold process, hot process, shampoo makers, and, you know, the Syndet makers. I get it. And I do it all because, you know, I have lots of different customers from lots of different walks of life and I want to give them an array of products that they can select from and they can make their own decisions in life and I don't have to force, you know, my belief system on them. So if you want just a cold process and, you know, a natural bar, cool. If you want a synthetic bar, cool. I've got both. Anyway, that is it for me today. If you are interested in the conditioner bar line, we actually do have six varieties available on the website and in the, in the shop. So definitely go check them out. They are formulated for a lot of different hair types. So that's cool. If you are interested in, you know, more soapy things, uh, subscribe to the channel because I'm doing this every day. And again, I do approach the majority of my, my videos, my content and everything from a scientific vein. So we are talking about, you know, what makes soap and how it all works. And that was kind of this whole week's uh, hair care line, you know, point. So maybe I delivered that well. I'm not, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, again, thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.